and welcome to my channel. My name is Sue Finley and I love to create all kinds of projects. You probably know me best for creating uh, resin pieces. I've got quite a few videos in my channel already of some resin works that I've worked on. But I also like to paint and draw and work on other projects. So this video is something a little bit different from what I normally do. So today I've been working on upcycling some vases. I got a whole load of uh, vases from uh, a retired florist and my aim is to alter these and upcycle them in some way and give them a new lease of life and I've been working on quite a few of these now and this is a simple project that I have been working on. So as you can see it's just a regular square vase but then I've added texture to the outside of the vase including the underneath. It's been painted and been given a bit of a, an antique look to the silver and then I've glued on some real amethyst stones. So this is quite a quick and simple project that I think you will enjoy. So without further ado, let's get into how I created this piece. So to help the texture bond to the glass, I'm actually using a gel medium, which I'm going to paint onto the glass to give it a little bit of extra tooth for the texture. I've used gel medium before on glass and it sticks really well so it just saves me having to sand the glass especially as I'm going to have some of the glass still exposed that I don't want to have scratches on the glass so I'm using the gel medium to help with the bonding process and as you can see I'm just painting it on with a, a brush I'm just giving it quite a generous layer in the areas where I want the texture to sit. So for the texture I'm just using a multi-purpose filler but you can use a wall filler, wood filler or any kind of filler that you have to hand. I will leave some links in the description below of the products or similar products that I have used. So first of all I'm just putting on the a generous layer of the filler and then I'm just going to smooth that out on the surface of the glass and then make my way around all of the glass and just add in a generous layer to this. Now I'm going to be doing two layers of this too because I want the it to be quite thick on the glass so rather than try and put one big massive layer on the glass I don't want it to crack too much so I'm, I'm, I'm putting two thinner layers onto the glass and as you can see it's it's not perfect the we'll come back and we'll smooth it out a little bit in a second so as you can see I'm just putting the mixture just across two of the corners because I want two corners to remain clear so that you can see inside. So the idea is that if you put a, a candle or have flowers in there that you can still see inside the glass. Now I'm using this texture paste because I want to be able to put candles in this whereas if I was to use resin I wouldn't be able to use candles and as you know that I do work a lot with resin but there's still some limitations and having a, a hot object inside or near the resin is not a good idea because one, it can cause the resin to soften and two, it could actually catch fire so you don't want that to be happening. So once you have your texture on you can then use your finger with a touch of water to smooth this out a little bit. So as you can see I'm just dis dipping the tip of my finger into the water and then just brushing it along the surface to help smooth that out. So once you have your texture on and it's all smoothed out we can then leave this to dry overnight and then I'll come back tomorrow and add some more 
texture paste to this to thicken up slightly. So this has had two coats of the texture paste and it's now time to paint it. It's been left for a few days to dry and what I'm using here is a, a cheap acrylic silver paint and I'm just going to give a generous coating of the paint all over making sure that we get into all the nooks and crannies. Now this is just going to be the base colour because we're going to come back in a moment and put a black wash over the top to make it look more a little bit more antique and, and not such a, a sparkly shiny finish. So the silver paint is now dry and I've mixed some black acrylic paint in with some water to thin it down and I'm now going over the top of the silver with the with a brush and making sure that again all the nooks and crannies are covered with the black paint. So once you've put your paint on there we can then use a baby wipe to lift off any excess paint to reveal some of the silver and allow the black to remain in the creases and crevices. And then once all your areas are covered it's then time to leave this to dry once more and we'll come back when this is dried and I'll show you how I create the highlights. So to give this a nice metallic finish I'm using the Silver Knight powder pigment from Lares. This adds a nice glitter and shimmer to the surface of the texture. So what I've done is I've just putting a small amount of the powder pigment into the lid of the jar and then just using my finger I'm going to ever so gently just brush this over the surface of the texture and what happens here is any raised areas will get some of the powder pigment whereas the creases and the crevices will remain quite dark where the black wash has gone into those creases so I'm just going to go over this surface of the texture and make sure that all the raised areas have got a nice highlight and a nice shimmer to it So once all your areas are covered we then need to protect the powder pigment otherwise but if you come to wipe this down with a, a damp cloth or a baby wipe the powder will come off. So I've gone back and I'm now using the gel medium again to give this a coating and just make sure that all areas of this texture is now protected. You can use a varnish you don't need to use gel medium it's just that I happen to have the gel medium to hand so that's why I'm using that but you can use a spray varnish just mask off any areas of the glass or any kind of art based varnish matte satin or gloss varnish will work well with this. Now this gel medium is glossy so it will give it a glossy finish but like I say if you want to give it more of a matte look then I would recommend that you use a matte varnish instead. If you're enjoying this tutorial you may be interested to know about some of my many other projects that I have on the go. I have lots of ideas for you to explore so go and check out the link in the description below for more information. Right back to the video. So once you've sealed your powder it's now time to move on to the embellishment stage. So for this I'm again I'm using gel medium and I'm putting a generous amount at the edge of the texture paste. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can put the gel medium on first and then add your stones like I'm doing here or you can mix your stones with the gel medium and then add it that way. So it's entirely up to yourself which way works best for you. 
but you, you do need a generous amount of gel medium for this to work well. Now the medium starts off light, life I should say is a white colour, however it will go clear once it's fully dried. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start adding some of the amethyst stones directly to the gel medium and I'm just going to move around and place them in a random pattern around the edge of the texture medium. I recommend that you try and fill as many of the gaps as possible because you want to make sure that when the medium is dry that this looks quite full of stones so where you can just place the stones as best you can. I also recommend that if you drag the stones up from the glass up into the medium and push that in it also helps with the adhesion but it also allows a nice finish on the edge of the stones where the glass is. Now don't worry if you've got any excess gel medium on the glass because we will come back once this is all dry and we will take off any excess with a sharp knife. So once again this has been left to dry overnight. Now the gel medium is not completely dry yet. You can see areas where it's still a little bit on the white side but that's fine it's dried and cured enough on the glass that we can now remove any of the excess from the glass and we can tidy that up and then we can set it aside to continue drying. So as you can see I'm just using a knife to help lift this from the glass. So you do need to be careful obviously that you don't knock any of the stones off so just make your way around the glass as carefully and as gently as you can. But the knife works well to scrape off any unwanted marks on there. So I hope you enjoyed this video and it's given you some new ideas for upcycling your own vases. If so then please give it a thumbs up or better still subscribe to my channel. I have plenty of other ideas to keep you inspired. So until next time, bye for now.